Welcome everybody to week number 13. Um, this will be uh, module 13 as we will cover uh, sections 11.2 and 11.3 this week. Last week we looked at uh, hypothesis testing for two population proportions. This week it's hypothesis testing for two population means. There's going to be two different uh, types of hypothesis tests involving unknown, two unknown population means. That where pairs are dependent <clears throat> upon each other, or samples are dependent upon each other, versus where samples from the two different populations are independent. First, we'll look at the case where the samples chosen from the two different parent populations are dependent upon each other. This is called a matched pairs hypothesis test for two unknown population means. There are some requirements for this test to be valid. Um, number one requirement is that samples uh, selected from the parent populations are dependent, dependent upon each other. The second requirement is that the differences uh, between um, the sample observations chosen from each parent population are normally distributed, or the sample sizes are greater than size 13, size 30 rather. The third requirement is that sample values are independent, meaning that the samples sizes chosen from the parent populations are no larger than 5% of the size of the population, which normally is satisfied um, <clears throat> when conducting such a hypothesis test as populations usually are much larger in size than the chosen samples. As always, there are three different types of hypothesis tests you can conduct, a two-tailed test, where the null hypothesis says that the mean difference, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here, two-tailed test where the null hypothesis says that the mean difference um, of the two populations is equal to zero versus the alternative hypothesis that says the mean uh, difference between the sample results um, between the two unknown populations is not equal to zero. You could have a one-tailed test, both a left-tailed test or a right-tailed test, in which case the left-tailed test or the lower-tailed test would say that the mean difference um, between the two different populations is less than zero. Right-tailed test or upper-tailed test would say the mean difference between the two populations is uh, greater than zero. Step number two is always establishing uh, the level of significance or the probability of committing a type 1 error. And again, we normally test at um, 1%, 5%, or 10%. The test statistic for um, such a test is distributed according to the student T distribution. It is going to be this ratio of the mean difference <coughs> from the two samples chosen divided by the standard error of the sampling distribution. That is to say, divided by the uh, standard deviation of the differences between the samples divided by the square root of the uh, sample size. Step four is always to is the step where we clearly indicate the rejection acceptance regions depending upon what kind of a test we are conducting and we are using the student t distribution which uh, is very similar in shape to the normal distribution and so therefore critical t values will um, either be uh, two of them for a two-tailed test, or one of them for a lower-tailed test, or one upper critical t-value for an upper-tailed test or right-tailed test. And of course, for a two-tailed test, the rejection regions are of size alpha divided by two. And for a one-tailed test, either lower or upper tail test, the rejection region is of size alpha. Step five, of course, is always the conclusion in which case we determine whether we have enough sample evidence to reject the null hypothesis or um, fail to reject the null hypothesis. In addition to conducting these hypothesis tests for two unpopul unknown population means, we're also going to construct confidence intervals. And these confidence intervals are going to be T intervals and uh, this is the formula that is going to be used to construct a confidence interval for the mean difference between the two population means, unknown means. The lower end point is going to be the uh, mean of the uh, sample differences 
minus this critical T value, depending upon what our level of confidence alpha is, times the standard error of the sampling distribution, and the upper endpoint of the interval is going to be the mean of the differences plus our margin of error. All right, here's an example. In an experiment conducted online at the University of Mississippi, study participants are asked to react to a stimulus. In one experiment, the participant must press a key on seeing a blue screen and reaction time in seconds to press the key is recorded. So as soon as a student sees a blue screen, they are to respond by pressing a button and the time it takes um, or the reaction time to between seeing the blue screen and pushing the button is recorded in seconds. The same participant is then asked to press a key on seeing a red screen and the reaction time in seconds to press the key is recorded. The results are illustrated in the table below. Now, this is called a matched pairs design in the sense that the same participant is involved in two different reaction experiments. That to a blue screen versus that to a red screen. And so notice, uh, participant number one uh, required 0.582 seconds to respond to seeing a blue screen, and that same uh, participant responded to seeing a red screen in 0 0.408 seconds. Respondent 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 also uh, were subjected to these two different um, <coughs> reaction tests. And so since each respondent or participant is subjected to two different tests, we say that these uh, data values are paired with each other. Okay, the reaction times to the blue screen and the reaction time to the red screen are paired observations. That's why we call this a dependent or matched paired um, data set here. Notice the last row here represents the difference between the reaction times to the blue screen and the red screen. And the order of subtraction is the blue screen reaction time minus the red screen reaction time. Now, the first thing we need to do in order to conduct a hypothesis test um, or to build a confidence interval is we need to find the mean of all these um, sample differences here. <coughs> to do that, we can easily um, pour these differences, these sample differences, into list one on our calculator. For, well, let me back up here. To compute all these differences in the bottom row of this table, we can use our calculator. In list one, we can put the reaction times to the blue screens. And in list two, we can put the reaction times for the red screens. And in doing so, it's very important to keep these observations paired with each other. Then we can compute the difference between these reaction times and put the differences in list three. Once the differences between the reaction times for each of the six participants is recorded in, and stored in list three, we can then subject list three to one of our stats function to determine the mean difference and the standard deviation of those differences. <coughs> so to do that on our calculator here, We go to stat, edit, clear out list one, clear out list two. So in list one, I'm going to put the uh, reaction times for the blue screen for each participant, 0 0.582, 0 0.481. 
Now in list two, we can put the reaction times to the red screen. The red screen. 0 0.408. Notice we keep the observations paired with each other for each participant. 0 0.407. 0.542, 0 0.402, 0 0.456, 0 0.533. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get out of this by hitting second um, mode to quit. Well, I'll tell you what, let's just stay, stay in that list editing mode. Let's hit our stat button, let's go back to edit. Let's just move your cursor up to the list name 3 by uh, hitting your up arrow key and moving your cursor up on the name list 3. And let's type in list um, 1 minus list 2. Second 1, subtract second 2. So we're going to store the differences between these reaction times in list 3. Hit enter and those differences are now stored in list 3. Now let's get out of this mode by sending second mode to quit. Let's now find the mean difference between these samples and the standard deviation difference. To do that is easy because remember in list 3 we have our differences. So we just got to go to stat, go to calculate, select the one virus stats function, and now type in the name of list 3. Notice D bar, or the mean of our differences, is 0 0.093. The standard deviation of those differences is S sub X, which is, which is really S sub D on our lecture handout. 0 0.173674408 is the standard deviation of all the differences. And you can see that those values are on the handout here. Okay, now that we've computed those values, we can um, <clears throat> now test the following hypotheses. The hypothesis we want to test is saying that the mean difference between the reaction times between the two different uh, colors, blue and red, is equal to zero, whereas the mean difference between the reaction times between the blue and the red screen is not equal to zero. And the claim for this test is to see um, if there is indeed a difference between the reaction times of the blue screen to the red screen. So the claim will be the alternative hypothesis. And we're going to test at 5%, so we're going to set alpha at 5%. This will be a two-tailed test. The test statistic now is going to be computed. So we take our uh, mean of all our sample differences, which was 0 0.093, divided by the standard deviation of the dif differences, which is 0.174, divided by the square root of the sample size. And there were six participants, so our sample sizes um, uh, are both six for the reaction times of the blue screen to the, and also to the red screen. Get on your calculator and dial this up. You'll get 1.31. Now, when you bring this up on your calculator, you'll probably have to enclose your entire denominator inside parentheses. Very important. Should get 1.31 for your test statistic. This is a two-tailed test, and we're testing at 5%, and so we're going to have two rejection regions of equal size, and they're both going to be of the size 0 0.05 divided by 2, or 0 0.025. To find these critical t values, we use our inverse t function in our calculator, and type in the area to the left of this lower um, tail critical t value, which is going to be 0 0.025. 0 0.05 divided by 2 is 0 0.025 comma, and the degrees of freedom is always the sample size minus one, so we'll have five degrees of freedom. You'll crank out the critical T values as being positive and negative 2.571. So negative 2.571 and positive 2.571 are the critical T values. Our test statistic is 1.31, and notice 1.31 falls in the acceptance region of the null hypothesis since 1.31 lies between negative and positive 2.571.
And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we are not able to reject the null hypothesis. And so, we would conclude then that sample evidence is uh, showing that the mean difference in reaction times for the two different colors, blue and red, is essentially equal to zero. In other words, there is no difference in mean reaction times to the two different colored screens, blue and red. Using the same example, now we're going to show you how to build a 95% uh, confidence interval for the mean difference between the mean reaction times. And this is the uh, formula that indicates the lower and upper endpoint um, calculations that are necessary. In for D bar goes 0 0.093, minus 2.571 is the critical T value, value we found above times 0.174 is the standard deviation of the differences divided by the square root of the sample size 6. This will be the lower end point and this will be the upper end point of the 95 percent confidence interval. Notice when we clean these endpoints up here, simplify them, we get these for the uh, endpoints. Most important observation here is to realize that in this 95 percent confidence interval the lower end point is negative and the upper point end point is positive. And because the lower end point is negative and the upper end point is positive, we are 95% certain that zero okay, is in this confidence interval here. So we are 95% confident that the mean difference between reaction times of the blue and red screen is essentially equal to zero, meaning there is no difference between the reaction times. And that's what we also ascertained or gathered above when we conducted a hypothesis test. So you can see that since zero is obviously in this confidence interval here, we can see that there's a 95% chance that the mean difference uh, in reaction times to the, to the, to the uh, two different colored screens is essentially um, equal to zero. <clears throat> now, that's how you do the problem, uh, the hypothesis testing problem, the using the critical value method, the five steps. And that's how you build a confidence interval um, manually. But ladies and gentlemen, as we have always found out in this course, when conducting a hypothesis tests, there's always a manual way of doing the problem, and then there's also the p-value method, which makes use of the calculator. So if we want to conduct the same hypothesis test, the two-tailed test we just conducted using the calculator, we would have to uh, find the mean of our sample differences, the standard deviation of those differences, and we would take those values and take them to the uh, t-test function on the calculator. To access that function, we would hit stat, test, t-test. So let's do that on our calculator. So on your machine, hit your stat button, go over to test, go down to t-test, select stats. Now, the purported mean difference under the null hypothesis is saying uh, that the, um, the mean difference between the reaction times of the two different populations, that being reaction time for the red screen versus the blue screen, is essentially zero. D bar, which is the mean reaction, the mean difference in reaction times, as gathered from our when we chose our samples, was 0.093. Standard deviation difference in reaction times is 0.17367, blah, blah, blah. Sample size was 6, and this is a two-tailed test. So we select not equal to, and then we just go down to calculate, and there we go. Notice our test statistic, 1.31, was what we computed in step 3 when we did the problem manually using the critical value method. Our p-value is about 25%, or 0.25. And that's a large p-value. Because our p-value is so large, we would not be able to reject the null hypothesis. And that also corroborates in our decision we made when conducting the test using the five-step method or the critical value method. We were unable to reject the null hypothesis. So that's how you conduct the hypothesis test <coughs> for a mean difference um, using the calculator.
Now, to build the confluence intervals using the calculator, we would use the uh, t interval function on our calculator. And of course, we're going to need our d bar and our standard deviation of our sample differences. So, what we do is we go to stat, test, go down to uh, t interval. Select stats. X bar is really D bar, the, the, the mean of our sample differences. The standard deviation of our sample differences is in there, 0 0.173674408080. Sample size is 6. Confidence level is 0 0.95, 95% 95 uh, 95 uh, confidence interval is what we want to construct. I'm just going on to calculate, and here we go. And notice we do crank out the same uh, confidence interval that we uh, arrived at manually by using the formula that was shown on the lecture handout. And since zero obviously is contained inside this interval because the lower endpoint's negative and the upper endpoint's positive, we would be 95% confident in saying that essentially there is no uh, difference between the mean reaction times to the blue screen versus the red screen. So that's how you build these confidence intervals using your calculator. All right, let's take a look at another example. This next one is going to be an example of a right tail test or an upper tail test. An automotive researcher wanted to estimate the difference in distance required to come to a complete stop while traveling 40 miles per hour on a wet versus dry pavement. Because car type plays a role, the researchers used eight different cars with the same driver and the same tires. The braking distance in feet on both wet and dry pavement is shown below in the table. The researcher wishes to test to see if mean stopping distance on wet roads is greater than mean stopping distance on dry roads. So ladies and here is our data set. Uh, we had eight different drivers. Uh, participating um, in stopping on wet versus dry roads using the same car and the same tires. So for instance, car driver number one required 106.9 feet to stop on wet pavement traveling 40 miles per hour and required only 71.8 uh, excuse me, or traveled only 71.8 feet and coming to a complete stop on dry pavement using the same car with the same tires. Driver 2 used their car and the same tires to stop on wet and dry pavement. And so notice that these observations are paired with each other. Same driver, same car, same tires, only stopping on different types of surfaces, wet versus dry. So these observations are matched or paired with each other here. To find the differences in the bottom row, you would put your wet stopping distances in list one, your dry stopping distances in list two. List three then would be the difference between list one and list two. So that's how you would have your calculator compute these differences in stopping distances uh, using your list uh, calculating feature on your, on your machine. So again, these differences in stopping distances would be in list 3 on your calculator because list 3 would be the values of list 1 minus list 2. Then you would subject list 3 to the one var stats function and find the mean and the standard deviation of those stopping distances. And here they are. The mean uh, difference in stopping distance between the wet and the dry roads is 32.7 feet. And the standard deviation of those differences is 3.77 feet. The hypothesis we want to test uh, says the alternative hypothesis being our claim says that the mean stopping difference on wet roads versus dry roads is greater than zero. 
since this mean difference is greater than zero, our claim is saying that on average, we need more distance to stop on wet roads than dry roads. So this is the alternative hypothesis. This would be the claim that is being tested here. And of course, the null statement says that the mean stopping difference um, between wet and dry roads is, is the same. OK. So first of all, using the uh, critical value method, showing all five steps. Uh, step number two, we're setting alpha at 5%. The test statistic now will be computed. Of course, d bar takes on the value of 32.7. Standard deviation of the differences is 3.77 divided by the square root of the sample size, which is 8. There are 8 drivers. To compute this on your calculator, you want to enclose your denominator inside parentheses. And therefore, you should get 24.53 for the test statistic, which is a t variant. Step number four now is going to have us establish the rejection and acceptance region. We use the student t distribution to do so. The rejection region is in the upper tail of the size of 5%, 0.05. Using your inverse t function in your calculator, you'll type in 0 0.05, that is the area to the left, actually to the left of what would be the equivalent negative t value down here comma, the degrees of freedom would be the sample size minus 1, so 7 degrees of freedom. You get 1.895 as being your upper tail critical rejection um, value, or T, or critical T value, 1.895. Our test st statistic is 24.53, which is much larger than 1.895, so falls uh, safely in the rejection region. And therefore, since our test statistic falls in a rejection region, we would conclude that um, we are able to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that sample evidence clearly shows that the mean distance to stop on wet pavement is greater than the mean stopping distance on dry pavement. And we only stand a 5% chance in committing a type 1 error in rejecting our null hypothesis. And so that appears to be kind of a low level of risk. And so we really wouldn't uh, worry about that. So this test seems to be somewhat conclusive, to say the least. If we construct a 95% confidence interval, uh, again, putting D bar and S of D in their places and N in their places, we compute the lower and upper endpoint. We get the 95% confidence interval to have these endpoints of 30.17 and 35.23 for the lower and upper endpoints, respectively. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, that both these endpoints are positive. And since both these endpoints are positive, <clears throat> we can conclude that the distance to stop on wet pavement minus the distance to stop on dry pavement must be greater than zero because both these endpoints are positive. Therefore, we are 95% certain in concluding that, yes, the distance to stop on wet pavement is indeed greater than the distance to stop on the, uh, the drive pavement. And notice that this confidence interval, our interpretation of this confidence interval, um, corroborates with our conclusion that we uh, stated up here when conducting the hypothesis test for the upper tail test. Of course, this test can, uh, the hypothesis test can be conducted using your calculator and the t-test function. In which case, if you did that, you'll discover that you get a very, very small p-value of 2.4 times 10 to the negative eighth power, which essentially is, for all practical purposes, zero. And therefore, for p-small, we reject the null. So we definitely want to reject the null hypothesis. And therefore, we will opt for the alternative hypothesis statement that says, yes, the mean stopping difference um, between wet and dry pavement is indeed uh, greater than zero, which is indicating or implying that on average uh, we require more distance to stop on wet pavement as opposed to dry pavement. The T interval function can be used to build a confidence interval, <clears throat> and when you do so, you'll get the same endpoints that we did uh, arrive at when we uh, built the interval um, manually.
So that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes uh, looking at hypothesis testing um, for two different population means using matched pairs or using um, sample data that is paired. Now I'm going to conclude with this uh, presentation and I will uh, be uh, doing a video on hypothesis testing for two unknown population means for independent samples. So stay tuned on that one.